Well, good evening there, Oregon Trail Council Scouters and all the ships at sea. Welcome to our current fireside chat. I think we have a, uh, an exciting agenda planned for you tonight. And uh, we'll, we'll find out about that as the evening goes on. I noticed that I ran out of coffee today, so, oh, well, it, it's been a good day nonetheless. So we have a pretty good crew here tonight. Thank you so much. We got uh, we got Carrie Hargray with us uh, of the uh, of the Wood Badge uh, phenomenon. Uh, Kelly Lay, who is new into the council, and she has some uh, uh, very good things to say about pack operations. And also wanted to hear her take on University of Scouting done virtually. She's attended a couple of those. Scott uh, Impacovit is here with us as always. Anita Thompson comes in to us all the way from the uh, coast. And Mike Rice from down south. So we've got a good representation all the way around the council today. It's a, it's a very, very positive sort of thing on this rainy, rainy Tuesday. Scott, would you like to uh, kick us off and give us a, a quick update from your perspective? Yeah, I, I think the two main things I want to talk about tonight, Randy, are, are both related to some email communications that we sent out. Uh, one happened last um last Friday, and the other one uh, went out yesterday, I think it was. And, and the first one has to do with the uh, governor's announcement of a statewide two-week freeze. Um, and just kind of update everybody that um, what that means as far as scouting is concerned. Um, you know, our, our, our thoughts are that for the most part, we need to, you know, our units need to make those decisions, but, uh, we feel at least until December 2nd, so when the freeze is supposedly over, that um, that it might be best to, to meet virtually. Um, and um, what does that mean as far as scouting and Oregon Trail Council? Well, a couple of things that, that are happening. We are we are closing down, at least for those two weeks, our, scamp, our camp properties and um, businesses are supposed to close to the public. So... Our office will be closed starting tomorrow through December 2nd, um, but that uh, our staff will still be here. And we encourage anybody that has any scouting business, any scouting needs to contact us either by phone, email, however, uh, you know, however works best for them, text us, whatever, and let us know their needs and we can still help them out. So more than happy to do that. Um, as I said, camp properties just will not uh, be used until at least December 2nd. And then we'll see how things go and if that extends on beyond uh, the December 2nd uh, date. So that's kind of an update um, on what's happening with COVID and how it affects scouting in, in our council. The other thing is just an email that, that went out to, uh, to everybody yesterday. It talks about the... Um, the uh, abuse cases and um, and the the bankruptcy and you know I all you hear at this point you you hear about the cases and, and as as our national council and everybody else states one case is more than should ever happen and um, we're so sorry that ever happened in the scouting program but it's it's been amazing to me I sent out an email yesterday. Um, just talking about the abuse cases and the bankruptcy. And I've, I've been amazed at the number of emails that I've gotten just talking about the positive experiences that people have had. Um, you know, one guy got an email today from somebody that said, you know, I started when I was seven years old. Tomorrow I turned 70 years of age. And my experience in scouting has been completely different. And, you know, he lost his father at age 10 and what scouting did for him in his life, um, the positive impact that it had, the positive role models that he had in the scouting program. Um, you know, a lot of times the public hears the bad things. They don't necessarily hear the good things that happens within the scouting program. All of us know those good stories because we've seen it. We've been involved with it. Um, and I would just encourage everybody as they continue here to, to hear the news, to just remember what we know about scouting. Um, we know that we've taken huge steps 
to uh, make sure that those things don't happen um, anymore. Uh, most of those cases are, you know, from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even earlier than that. Um, and and the Boy Scouts of America made huge strides to make sure that scouting was a safe environment and continue to do so. Um, and so just as we continue to hear the news, uh, again, I just ask you to keep in mind the positive stories that you've seen out of your scouting experience. And, and that's pretty much what I've got to cover tonight, Randy. So thank you. Hey, Scott, Scott, I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's important that we stay as informed as we can. I'd like to uh, welcome an old friend of mine, uh, Ed Singer, joined us tonight. We uh, were pleased to uh, to see you there, Ed. Been been a been a while. Been a while. Okay. Uh, Kelly Lay is is our next one up. She's a special guest tonight. She comes to us off of the uh, off the coast, and um, new arrival to the Oregon Trail Council, but uh, already beginning to make an impact. So, Kelly, if you give us a uh, Give us the benefit of your wisdom. We'd be grateful. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, I've been scouting for four years now. Um, I started when my Arrow of Light Scout was a tiger. <clears throat> and um, I became a den leader. And I scouted with my old council until we moved here to Oregon Trail Council last year. And... Um, so I, I was a den leader with Coquille last year, and, you know, we really wanted to get a pack going here in Coos Bay. So um, we started, started uh, trying in February, and um, the lot, the COVID, you know, kind of put a hold on everything. But we, we started up again, and so our parents and stuff, we agreed to meet virtually. Um, and we're having um, Zoom meetings twice a month, and um, that's what our parents um, feel like the scouts and, and they, they themselves can handle. And so what I'm doing is um, I'm kind of introducing a concept. So like the first month I introduced um, Leave No Trace and the Outdoor Code, Six Essentials, and then um, over the next two weeks I asked the scouts with their family units to go on a hike and to take pictures and then the next the next time we met we uh we talked about their hikes and what they saw and um i i got a guest speaker to come from south slough reserve and he uh showed us some animals and animal tracks that we could see while we were there so that was that was pretty cool um so I'm just trying to make it, you know, fun for, for the scouts. Like yesterday, I started out um, just telling jokes while the scouts were gathering. Um, and then once once we, uh, I, I taught them about flag etiquette and stuff after we opened. And I, um, beforehand, I asked the parents to, if they had a flag and if they didn't, to just make a simple paper flag. And then we practiced folding a flag. Um, and then I had pictures of when my Arrow of Light Scout was a tiger, and we had um, attended a flag retirement ceremony, and I went through the steps of um, retiring a flag, and I found a good video online of um, a flag retirement ceremony, and they seemed to like that. And then um, to kind of up up the energy afterwards, after all that, um, I did like a quick like scavenger hunt and they, they really liked that. I got a message afterwards from one of the parents and said that their scout really enjoyed the meeting. And so that that really helps me, you know, energize me and and let me know, you know, I'm I'm doing an okay job. But yeah, um, that's that's what I'm pretty much doing. I'm like introducing something and then asking them or challenging them to do something. So this month we're gonna, I, I challenge them to um, find an area, either their street or a park or a beach and um, spend some time cleaning up the area. And that'll go along with their duty to country 
requirements. So what do you what do you feel? What is your what is your feedback from uh, from uh, the parents and the uh, uh, the scouts themselves? What's uh, what's your take? Um, I feel like you know they they seem pretty energized and and um, vocal during the meetings. We're pretty small, so I pretty much just have them stay off of mute, and I tell them you know it's their it's their pack meeting. If they have anything to add or, or talk about, to uh, go ahead and <clears throat> you know they're they're pretty uh they're they're pretty into it, you know. And then, like I said, the parents, they seem, they seem to um, enjoy it, too. I, I kind of make it like a family. They're all, they're all in their each, each family unit, you know. They have like, their own individual family dens. <clears throat> yeah, there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of discussion across the months about kids uh, being uh, Zoomed out and... Uh, uh, tired of doing things virtually and, and so on. Um, but you seem to have broken the code to get uh, get the kids and the parents uh, physically engaged with uh, with your program. Is that is that correct? I think so. Um, I've, I've really, um, like during the summer and stuff, I, I attended like, or I had my scouts attend a lot of different virtual camps and I took a lot of tidbits and things that they did and and added it or didn't add it if if it didn't seem like my scouts were interested um you keep them engaged and that's what's uh that's what's important kelly do you think part of it is you think part of it too is the fact that they're just so eager to see their friends, to talk to their friends that, you know, this is a, it's our format for now, you know, <laughs> it's the way for us still to connect with our, our friends that we scout with. You know? Yeah, especially in my school district, um, when they have their school meetings or just meeting with their teacher, they're not seeing any of their peers. So that helps a lot that they're actually able to communicate and talk to and see, see their friends that they can't, see on a day-to-day -day basis now yeah cool well you also had uh experience with uh in, uh in a different topic but still virtually you've attended a, a couple of university scouting sessions here recently and uh you had some things to, to tell us about that as well things that we might be able to use in, inside the oregon trail council as well can you share that with us for a few minutes yeah so um i did one a couple weeks ago and it was with Cascade Pacific Council and um, they, they they did it just it, it felt like I was going to an actual University of Scouting. They had the six separate classes with all the different topics that they would normally have. Um, campfire, virtual campfires, virtual Pinewood Derbies, um, even like backpacking and things like that. Um, Cascade Pacific Council, they, they actually had a separate website. And I, I found that it was kind of hard to figure out just on that day. Um, but the one that I attended last weekend, they did separate Zoom meetings. So they sent out Zoom links for each meeting. And that one was easier because I was able to just hit the Zoom link um, like five minutes before the class started and they let me in. So you had a you had a series of Zoom links that were all associated with the University of Scouting, is that right? Correct. So each class had their own link. Uh-huh. So um, I believe each teacher had one link. So I was in like one class with, or two classes with the same teacher and it was the same link. So So she was just able to open up the same one. Yeah, we've been uh, discussing how to handle uh, the uh, roundtable using uh, uh, various Zoom links for the same reason. Um, I don't know that we've arrived at uh, uh, real conclusions just yet. But very good. So you think the uh, University of Scouting virtually uh, format works okay? It wasn't uh, too much talking head routine? 
Um, I don't think so. Um, I, I took some fun ones like um, scouting songs. And so it, it broke up maybe some of the some of the more drier classes like finances <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, um, I, I, I learned probably just about the same amount of stuff as I would going and, and then I did see attending the one that I, was my old council. I saw familiar faces and that was, that was really nice too. Very good. Very good. Comments, questions from, uh, from others, uh, for Kelly about her experiences, uh, in her pack or, uh, with university scouting. I think the uh, university scouting side especially uh, is very interesting to me. Comments, questions, thoughts, please? Just a comment, Randy. I, I would say, you know, we're trying, we're working with both um, Cascade Pacific Council and um, Crater Lake Council and trying to share those resources. Um, you know, now's, now's the time that, hey, if we aren't able to do that here locally in, in Oregon Trail Council, Let's, let's share those resources so that people have the opportunity, like Kelly did, to, to join and be a part of that, that, that training. So, um, you know, we, we encourage everybody to take advantage of those opportunities when they come along, and we're trying to share those as best we can. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, this is not a, uh, this is not a dead time in scouting. We, uh, we need to be in the middle of our program year and continue running, running hard. Very, very good. Terry, did you, uh, did, you wanna, did you have a plug to make or you uh, just decided to join in tonight? Um, I decided to join in tonight, but if you would like me to plug something, I'd be happy to plug. You know, I think wood badge training would be a great thing for you to plug. What do you think? Can you talk to that? Always a great thing <laughs> to plug. So um, I'm going to start with the mission of wood badge, which is to inspire and to train adults to achieve the mission and aims of the BSA through world-class leadership training that sets an example for youth empowerment to impact the world. That being said, Wood Badge is um, a, an adult leadership training for all scouting adults. Um, and we have a course coming up, you know, this spring. So register, register, register. Uh, we're only allowed 48 participants. So if you want to attend, um, I would say register soon. Um, That's a quick. Yeah, it's on the council website. Um, and, and it is the training for adults. Um, it's not for youth, it's for our, our leaders. It's for our Cub Scout leaders, our Boy Scout leaders, our venturing leaders. Um, it's for our council leaders. So if you're involved in scouting Wood Badge and you haven't been to Wood Badge, Wood Badge is for you. But if you've also been to Wood Badge, we have a brand new course, uh, brand new curriculum. And so you can attend again. So that's my- Very good. Yeah. Good, good plug, absolutely great program. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it, yep. Very good. Ed Singer, we haven't seen you in a coon's age. You got uh, you got good things that you'd like to share with us. You're on mute, but uh, you're you're welcome to be off mute and, and share. Still on mute. That's going to be the watchwords for 2020. You're on mute. <laughs> there, am I off mute now? Yeah. We got you, buddy. We got yeah. you. Well, I'm I'm just I'm just. Uh, hooking up to this just to try to keep uh, tabs of what's going on. My, my involvement is uh, almost uh, non-existent nowadays. You know, I'm 79 years old and I'm kind of just hanging in there. Mm -hmm. I, I try to keep tabs on Wood Badge and uh, hoping to maybe help with that one a little bit later uh, this spring. Yes. Uh, we, we'd sure love to have you. That'd be a, that'd be a good thing. Well, thanks. Yeah, we, uh, I don't know if you realize that while we've been doing these fireside chats uh, for uh, some time now, we've gone to a different communication cycle within the council where we're using uh, Tuesdays as our communication cycle. And Rob or Scott, jump in if I, if I uh, foul this up. But the first Tuesday, we go to council roundtable. 
And the second Tuesday, we do an email update, news of the uh, day and that sort of thing that comes out from, uh, from Scott and Rob uh, at the council level. And then on the third Tuesday is Fireside Chat. And then the fourth Tuesday is the uh, release of the uh, Trail Smoke newsletter, which I am proud to say is what, you're 10 or 12 months running in a row now, Scott? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a running joke uh, with Scott. Uh, we, uh, I don't think we had 10 in the last uh, five, in the five years previous, did we? <laughs> We've uh, broken the mold as it were. Yeah. I'll we wanted to make sure everybody knew to expect it at the end of the month. So. Yep. So Tuesdays is the communication cycle, and that uh, that seems to uh, uh, work well. So we're we're down to a single fireside chat each month, and uh, we we try to make the most of it. Very good. Rush, did you have uh, have some things that you wanted to share with us tonight, or you just decided to come along with us? Well, I tried I tried to enter the thirty roundtable planning meeting and uh, hooked up with McKay Lindsay, who was in his car driving. Um, <laughs> and uh, he agreed that there was a meeting, but apparently he and I were the only two attending. So um, I dropped that and came over to your meeting. Uh, so that's, that's my update. And, and um, I, left, I left a message for Hunter Raines and I just don't know, uh, apparently, uh, this got lost in the shuffle with the transition to this uh, uh, new communications program, which is great. And uh, congratulations on setting aside Tuesdays and, and the plan going forward through each month. Okay, well, we hope the uh, roundtable uh, planning session comes together. That's been a, uh, that's been a key to, uh, to making all that work uh, very, very well. Now, I noticed that Anita Thompson is trying to bail on us here. Anita, you can't bail. You got equal time. We never see or hear from you. And she, she, see, she's hiding on us now. I can tell. I can tell. All right. Anything else for the good of the order? We're, uh, we're, we're still five or eight minutes away. Scott? Yeah, I would, I would mention uh, one of the things that uh, I neg neglected to mention earlier is we did decide. Um, um, today, actually earlier today, that uh, just the way COVID's kind of still around and affecting our lives and, and scouting, um, that there wasn't a, we didn't feel that there was a way that we could, um, that we can have Klondike and still keep our scouts safe. So we've decided to to, uh, since we don't see a whole lot of change between now and then, we decided to cancel Klondike. And I'm not sure that we've gotten anything out about that yet, but just wanted to let everybody know. Um, but a positive, I will mention um, that a week and a half ago on um, November 7th, that we decided we could do scouting for food in a safe fashion. And it's been almost, almost two weeks now we don't know if, I mean, we're relatively sure. We haven't heard of any COVID cases from anybody that was involved in that process, whether it's Salvation Army, Scouts, um, or um, Delta Rotary that helped us here in Eugene. Um, and I, I think primarily a lot of that was done in the Eugene Springfield area. We, we did two and a half truckloads of food on that day just here in Lane County. And I was just, I was amazed at the response, not only from the scouts, but from the community as well. Um, that represents 4.7 um, tons of food that was collected on that day. And just very, very pleased with the response. The Salvation Army was just, I, I think they were just baffled by the response that they got. They, uh, they had to go back twice and unload some food and come back with some new barrels and some other things to, to help us get the rest of the, the food that was brought in that day. So thank you to everybody that was involved in that process. Again, we did in a safe fashion. I think any pictures that you see from that, everybody that was involved was, was masked up at the time and you know, uh, trying to take care of the social distancing in the process and, and families went and uh, collected food together. I know Troop 100 did a great job. They're represented here. So 
Um, just very, very pleased with how that went. Very good. Yeah, that's really what's that's real. That that's scouting. That's uh, that's a good indicator of uh, not only how the community feels about us, but how we feel about our community. So it's uh, it's very, very important. And I noticed that there, there was a lot of councils. I see some Facebook posts. There's a lot of folks from across the uh, nation that did thousands of pounds of food uh, for uh, uh, for their own scouting for food time frame. That's uh, that's good stuff. So we, we haven't heard from Anita or Mike or Larry. Who wants to go first? Oh, Anita, Anita went first. <laughs> well, my son's skating, so I'm sitting in my car at our skating rink in Coquille, which is in our community building, the last skating they'll have till who knows when. Um, so I hope you all can hear me. We are, our troop is actually going to cut trees this weekend. They're going, they're traveling in family groups the, the trees will be marked so they can spread out so that they'll have that safe distancing. They'll be wearing their masks, um, wearing gloves, of course, because they're using, they're doing trees. This is our major fundraiser for our troop. And we've already been getting questions from the public just to make sure that we'll still have trees because that's where they buy them every year. We've been meeting, the troops been meeting every Monday and we've had different dens from the PAC meeting um, every other Monday in the same location. So we make sure we have enough adults available and not too many youth um, at one time. It's a, it's a huge room so we can spread out and we all wear masks and everything. And I think the planning meeting for the, for the round table, I thought it was on a Thursday, not a Tuesday, but I'm not at home. So I can't look at my notes. Um, no, there's still <laughs> so, time to figure it out. There's still time yeah. to figure it out. Very good. It, well, it, it was tonight. I missed it too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes life gets in the way of life. There's just no doubt. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're real pleased to hear what you're doing with that uh, with that troop down there. And uh, that's among the reasons that we've invited you to Roundtable and we uh, continue to, to invite you to the fireside chat. We'd, we'd love to hear more and more about what's going on in, uh, in your district and uh, in your communities. Mike, Larry, oh, and Jim Wiley's here. The, the, the famous Jim Wiley. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, Larry. Jim, anything for the good, of the good of the group? We've had a pretty interesting uh, chat tonight. I just wanted to say that down here in Doug Fir, we did, we, we did the food drive also, and um, Pack 46 in green uh, collected 1,800 pounds um, last Friday in front of Grocery Outlet there in Winston for the Winston Food Pantry, and then... Um, the pack in Myrtle Creek and the two troops in Riddle, they were, went out this last Saturday, but I haven't heard how much they collected. They'd gone out on the 7th and distributed their bags and such. And then they went back Saturday collecting things. So we, we had units working on that down here too, so. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, and I don't think Scott included uh, your numbers in there. It was just the, uh, the uh, the two, uh, the two districts here locally, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for making that happen down there. Well, I didn't That's... make it happen. Becca made it happen. <laughs> and Fred made it happen. Yeah. That's, uh, that's hot stuff. There's just no doubt about it. That's what scouting is all about. There's just no kidding about that. Very good. Thank you. Larry, Jim? Well, um, I just joined in to see what was going to be said here and see if there's any information I could glean to take to my units and stuff. So that's kind of why I'm here. Well, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're glad to have you. And uh, hopefully you, you had a chance to uh, say hi to Kelly. And, uh, you know, she's a, she's a good resource out there on the coast. And Larry's a, a good resource uh, up in Corvallis. Mike uh, is in Roseburg. Jim is down in Roseburg. Rush is here locally. So there's lots of... Uh, Lots of resources to uh, to reach out and uh, to team up with. Jim, I see you're off mute. I, I was able to find some scouts in uniform uh, a couple of days ago and sold me about, I'm guessing it's going to be five or six pounds of weight gain. Uh, in very chocolate. good, very good. Uh, yep. Also, uh, one thing to report is that the uh, first first lodge advisor of Cheskin Lodge, Jim Vitus, who was diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, last week, was sent home yesterday to do recovery at home, uh, which is his, his rest home. So I'm really thrilled about that. Yeah, very good. Yeah, he's been around a, 
Oh, for a long time. Very, very famous uh, locally here. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate the update there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, I think we are, in fact, at the top of the hour. Uh, our 30 minutes together has uh, uh, come to a close. So we're going to uh, close the, the session tonight, but by all means, stay around and, uh, and chat. Uh, that's what we're here for, is to uh, spread the word amongst ourselves and enjoy the time that we can together. So thank you for attending our fireside chat, and we will see you third Tuesday next month, same bat time, same bat channel.